Hello and welcome to Open Source Code. This is the second video in the GNU Linux tutorial series. In this series, we are going to look into the GNU Linux system, understand what the GNU Linux system is, we'll look into its installation, basic commands, and day to day usages and further advanced usages of the system. In today's video, we are going to discuss what are the advantages of having a Linux system. We are also going to see what are the prerequisites for installing Linux. Okay, so before we proceed further, I would request you to, if you have not watched my previous or the first video in this series, that video discusses about free and open source software or FOSS, open source, free software and these concepts. I would want you to go through that video and try to understand the concept of open source software. This is going to be important because it is going to help you understand how Linux or open source softwares have developed and what is the philosophy behind these softwares. I am providing the link in the description of the video. You can go to that video and watch it and come back again and continue watching this. If you have already watched this video, let us continue further. Okay, so let us look at what are the features of a GNU slash Linux system. The first feature or the biggest advantage that you are going to get from an open source software is that it is free. Yes, as I discussed in the previous video, free as in freedom, as well as you are going to get this software free of cost or almost free of cost. Of course, you will be spending your bandwidth in downloading this software. Now, when I say free, I don't mean you are going to get a illegal software or pirated software. No. What you are going to get is a completely legal software that you can use without any fear. The other thing that you get with a Linux system, when you download a Linux distribution, which will be around 2 to 4 GB you get a lot of packages you get a lot of packages what do I mean by lot of packages unlike other operating systems you don't need to install different kind of tools applications separately the single distribution which is as I said around 2 to 4 GB will give you almost all the packages that you will require from for day to day use that is uh, office suits, web browsing tools, multimedia tools, video, mp3 players and whatever you require for day to day use. If you are a programmer you might be interested in compilers and interpreters so usually these packages always come with C, C++, Perl, Python, PHP and load of other things that you will be needing for your programming purposes. If you are interested in setting up servers, usually these distributions will give you uh, loads of servers dependent upon your requirement. Like if you are interested in web server, you can install Apache. Apache is one of the very famous web servers that is being used on the net. If you are interested in having a database, database server, you can easily install MySQL or these is probably you might get MariaDB which is a drop-in replacement of MySQL. You want a mail server, you want a SMTP server, you want a FTP server, you want a SSH server, you name it. Most of these things are available in built into it. 
and if you are not still satisfied or you cannot find it believe me all these distributions have online repositories and you can find a lo loads of softwares from these repositories for example if you look at debian debian is one of the distributions which has almost one of the biggest set of online repositories ranging from hundreds of thousands of software packages available when we'll be installing the linux distribution we'll go through the small list of packages that are available on that particular distribution and maybe that will help you overcome the issue of whether softwares are available for your use or not the next point or another question that might arise in your mind is where is linux used i have only heard it but is it actually used believe me linux is used in lot of places the first place probably the android phone you are holding right now it uses the linux kernel linux is not only used on pcs but it is used on supercomputers to small devices like your smart tv smart watches mobile phones embedded devices routers and what not today linux is everywhere and you should be learning linux last but not the least which is the most interesting aspect of a gnu slash linux system why is this this have been bothering you for a very long time install linux and you will never have to face issues of viruses anymore believe me i have been using linux for almost 19 years now and i have never bothered about viruses or while using pen drives or copying from some cd's or dvd's this has not been a issue for me and i have been living peacefully i i don't even get bothered when there is a news that some new virus has attacked all the networks all over the world i have never faced virus issues till date so this is one of the biggest interesting aspects that should make you feel that you should start using linux okay so let us see now if we are planning to install linux what kind of hardware it requires i have already discussed that linux runs from very basic things to supercomputers so linux will easily run on the machines you are having linux can run on very low end computers if you have some old machines you can happily reutilize those machines now and use linux on that for different purposes maybe you can just convert it into a media center your hardware will be useful again or you can just use it as a learning learning tool rather than letting it sit idle and letting it go it go to waste so what would be the requirement of linux let me give you a higher end requirement okay this might sound funny when i say higher end requirement so what do we need for as a installation so a processor of around 1 gigahertz speed yeah you heard me right 1 gigahertz speed around ram how much ram would you need around 2 gb of ram and hard hard drive space would be around 10 gb in this 10 gb you will be able to install all the softwares and you will still have some 3 4 gb of space for working purpose if you are planning to use linux for a longer term then i would suggest that you give around 50 gb of space for this because if you are going to uh, work on this you will be creating your own data files images music if you are going to work on graphics and animation you will be utilizing a lot of disk space so believe me you would want to give more space to the linux system not for the whole linux system as such but for the data that you will be generating or you will be downloading or whatever so that will be around 50 gb 
so this might look funny for a higher end site but this is a very good initial setup most of us will be having higher end desktops or laptops but this is a entry level thing if you have anything like this or higher you can easily work on this with this but if you have anything less than this trust me you can still use linux on that before we go ahead with the discussion of how to go ahead and start the preparation for installing the linux system i would want to put a fair warning over here please please back up your data okay if your data is lost you cannot hold me responsible for it i will repeat it again please back up your data okay so how do we go ahead with the installation process before we can go ahead with the installation process you will need to download the linux iso image as i discussed in the previous video we will be working with linux mint 19.3 and i am specifically going to use the xfce version now why i have chosen this linux mint i have found it fairly easy to use easy to install and i feel it is quite stable apart from that linux mint 19.3 is lts what lts means is that it is a long term support and this support updates and other things will be available to us till 2023 so we are going to use and work with linux mint 19.3 so how do you get linux mint well i'm providing the link in this video also in the description you can go to the linux mint website and download the 64 bit xfce version of it the iso image is around 1.9 or 2 gb please download that iso image assuming that you have newer uh, laptops which are 4 5 years old or newer then you will download the 64 bit image if you have anything older than that fine then you should download a 32 bit image once you have downloaded this particular image the next very important step will be to verify that the downloaded file or the iso image is not corrupted and we have got the correct image this is called as the checksum verification or the signature verification again i am going to provide you a link which is there on the linux mint website you can follow the description over there install the package on uh, whatever operating system you are using and verify that iso if the checksum verifies then we will be proceeding to the next step if the checksum does not verifies please download the image again and re-verify it now i hope you have downloaded the image you have verified it the next step will be to either write this image to a dvd or in our case we would prefer to write it to a usb now keep in mind that writing to usb does not means copying the file as it is to usb we have to make the usb bootable and for that purpose there is a special process of writing the iso image to usb for which you need some specialized software which are called as image writers using these softwares you will be able to write this image to the usb again a warning over here the pen drive that you are going to use should not contain any data 
any data on the pen drive will be lost after this process is done. So make sure you have backed up the contents of the pen drive or pen drive is empty or you really don't need that data. So for this purpose when I start the demonstration I will be using a tool called as HR. Again, the link is provided in the description and is being displayed over here also. HR, why I have chosen that is available for most of the operating systems and we will be using HR for writing the ISO image to the pen drive. Once it is written to the pen drive, we will be able to boot from this pen drive and a very interesting thing that you can do is you can explore the Linux system without installing and you can still work from that pen drive and try to get a feel of the Linux system. I usually do not recommend this method. First, because it is slow. Second, it does not really give you a feel on how you can work with the Linux system. But if you are interested, you can try that process and you can see how the Linux system feels. Once we have done this process, we will be booting from that pen drive and from the graphical interface, we can further start installing the Linux system. This is there in this video. In the next video, I am going to show you the demonstrations on how to write the image to the pen drive, how to boot from the pen drive and how to actually start the installation process. Hope you like the video. Please do subscribe to our channel and as usual, if you have any queries or questions, you can put it in the comment section. Thank you.